Good morning, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading reports for August 15th, 2015. So we are in sideways normal conditions. Uh, so we're going to favor uh, short-term trades, uh, like intraday mostly, because there's been limited day-to-day follow-through. Um, Looking at the weekly RSI 14, we're in the middle of neutral at 53 out of 100. On a 10-day basis, using the 10-day NDX, we're at 68 out of 100. Looking at the market mosaic, uh, we see that we are 1.49% above the 200-day moving average. It puts us in red sideways. Red meaning that it's been among the worst readings of the past 180 days. The slope of the 50 has uh, gone to negative minus 0.04%. That's yellow neutral. ADX is still a weak, untrending, 15.2. Uh, the NDX 10, again, that's 68. That's where the 68 comes from. The risk index is the 30-period moving average of the VIX divided by the 10-period. The threshold between risk on and risk off is 1.0. The current reading is at 1.04, so we are in risk on conditions. When we take that score of 1.04 compared to the last 5,000 trading days, we find the average in the standard deviation. That allows us to compute the risk Z-score. That Z-score right now is 0.4, so it's 0.4 standard deviations above the long-term average of the risk Z. You can see a 90-day histogram of this indicator. We are in a period that has been uh, choppy, uh, slightly favoring the long side, uh, but we've come down now from one uh, Z-score of over 1.5 back around the zero line. If this gets below the zero line, then we pick up a short-term uh, intraday bias. During these periods, as you notice here, these are fantastic days for being short intraday when price collapses to new lows of the day or takes out key support levels like yesterday's low of the day. So we are approaching that area. When you see it declining like this, what that means is ensure that your long positions have uh, uh, capital preservation stops in and that you're uh, sure how much you want to uh, give back versus how much you want to hold on to and it says uh, be more reluctant to take overnight risks. In monthly rebalancing you can see the current holdings from the beginning of the month and then the winners as of close of business Friday's price um, and then the leaders inside the dial the ETF 200 and the ETF max. In ETF 2 the theoretical exposure is at 10% with only one of the 10 regional indices above its four-month moving average. The model portfolio itself is at 80% exposed and has stops in place. Uh, these are the uh, holdings inside the various blended monthly rebalancing portfolios. You see only three are on buy signals, uh, treasuries, uh, technology and uh, U.S. real estate. So with two out of those three um, being alternate uh, asset classes, that shows you how much weakness there really is in the market. And then when we look at the longer term or the wider portfolio ETF 32, again, you can see just about everything is on a cash signal with the exception of these uh, U.S. large caps, uh, these defensive plays, consumer discretionary, health care, utilities, uh, financials, consumer staples all looking pretty good. So uh, those are going to be uh, symbols that we are continually interested in. XLY, XLV, XLP. There may be some room left in XLF as well. The strength in technology is still a residual from the remarkable moves we saw in the last couple of weeks of Amazon and Google. Uh, down at the weakest end, uh, it remains uh, Latin America and uh, Brazil on the short side. Um, so those on, on weakness, uh, those are going to continue to be uh, likely candidates for short side trades. In the ETF max, uh, what I look for here is exceptional performances on the one week move among the strength leaders. So something like Biotech XBI has been brilliant on uh, three month and six month, but had uh, has been suffering the last one month and uh, one week. And so uh, it looks like uh, they have cracked. However, um, that, that still has enough residual strength that we may be interested in uh, biotechs uh, for a rebound play. 
Um, strength in um, home construction in position nine that has been green all the way across the board. Um, more home builders and dynamic food and beverage, so we might want to look at XHB. These are all symbols that we'll look at on the uh, for the members during the trade framing process uh, in the follow-on uh, webinar. Um, so biotech, um, and we might be also interested in um, I think we have to go back up here to the top and look at the small cap healthcare PSCH. Uh, that still is showing some outsized strength too. Okay, moving on to the S&P 500. Uh, we're using the same lens for the blended month rebalancing. Again, we're looking. These are the top 40 or so. Uh, uh, performers on the blended percentage. So the blended percentage comes from the three month and six months uh, are multiplied by these weighting factors and gives us a blended number. Then we rank by the blended. In the green, it means it's more than one standard deviation better than the peer group. And uh, in this case, being the S&P 500. Uh, yellows are between zero and one standard deviation below average. Red is uh, more than one standard deviation below average over that time period. So cable vision, it's been exceptional on three, six, and the blended look back has been weak on one month and very weak on the one week. So CBC could be uh, could be a candidate for a reversal here, um, uh, either as a rebound from uh, as a buy on dip opportunity, or it could be this outperformance is cracking. We won't know. Uh, Google remains of interest uh, with its green performance. Uh, GameStop had an average month but an exceptional week and an exceptional long term. So this could be a um, uh, some additional momentum coming back into what already had relative strength. Uh, Google again you can see strength there. Uh, DH uh, or DR Horton and Telco, so that's DHI and TE. Uh, DHI and TE are going to be some momentum plays that we look at. Uh, Horton was on last week's report, and we were able to get some of this on the swing. And uh, we'll look at O'Reilly for that for that reason too. O R O Y. Uh, Tesoro Petroleum (TSO) has been exceptional, three months, six months, and blended, uh, slightly above average over one month, but got crushed this week. So TSO is looking like uh, uh, an interesting case. And and in these cases, what we're going to do, since we look at both sides of the trade on these momentum plays. Uh, we can we can buy momentum if we see it and starting to outperform the market once more, sort of confirming the long term look. But if we see it cracking, then this could be something like a parabolic move that still has more uh, more fear entering as people are trying to lock in profits and are thus motivated to sell. So we see short term downside momentum in those. So in either case, all we're looking for is that um, um, intraday exceptional performance that lets us make low risk entries. Um, looking at the market health check, these uh, vertical blue lines um, represent um, 10, 20, and 30 days worth of look back. The horizontal purple line is the swing high up here around 213, which got rejected back here um, in mid-July. Um, the blue line is fair value where the 30-period Bollinger Band, uh, right in the middle of the 30-period MA. Um, the red lines have been support levels in the past. Uh, and uh, this solid red area here is the edge of that's the 200 period move and average. And then the area under the curve is the danger area. Uh, we're uh, only 1.49% above that, so that puts us into sideways markets. Um, the th dark blue shaded area is the 30 period Bollinger Band, plus or minus one, that's the river. The lighter blue shaded area is the floodplain, 30 period Bollinger Band, plus or minus two. This orange ribbon in the middle is the dragon. That's a 10 period Bollinger Band, plus or minus a half, which acts as a noise uh, barrier and uh, gives us um, early insights into potential changing in the state of the river. You notice that the dragon has been this sideways chop, which is how I would characterize really the last three months with expanded volatility as you see the, each of the humps and the swings getting larger. Everything right now is locked solid into fair value with the um, 30 period regression line, the 10 period regression line, basically flat, price right on the Bollinger Band mean, the dragon in the middle of the river, there is absolutely no directional bias 
in this, and uh, that's as clear a sideways market uh, condition as you can have. Um, you notice this uh, sine wave looking uh, curve, that's the time series plot of the slope of the 30, and you see that it uh, has been just oscillating well within the boundaries of, of normal. Uh, it most recently peaked here at that uh, at about 0 0.12. It doesn't get to be exceptionally steep up until it gets above 0.4, and it's not even close to that right now. This dotted line in the middle is uh, the zero line for that slope value. When it goes below that dotted line, then the slope of the 30 is actually negative, and that's bad for the um, for the swing trades uh, that are looking to go long. Uh, so what we have right now is a perfectly sideways choppy market. Uh, we're right um, uh, just slightly above the halfway line here on the 10 period um, uh, Williams percent R. The jaws of percent price oscillator are open to the downside, so there is a negative bias in all this price action. You can see that reflected in the negative slope of the 10. But we're still in the noise uh, boundary here because we are within that 5% sell-off from the swing high. So if we plot the swing high here, we drop uh, a 5% band, and so this is really for institutional money still well within the noise uh, band. We're only about halfway down that, that drop. Uh, and so this is a market that's still just waiting to, waiting and seeing. There's nothing uh, compelling for the long side and um, not really motivated short side sellers um, uh, for the S&P 500. So uh, I take that as a sign of uh, tentative flight to quality in the U.S. large caps, which have been the strongest uh, sector here in, in the market. So this is business as normal. This is a stock pickers market. It is a short-term traders market. Notice the uh, large size of these daily ranges and the fact that there's been little to no follow-through uh, in terms of long swings. So you might get one or two days in a row of large signal days, but then those get reversed. So we are getting paid to uh, uh, smoke them when we got them, to, to take the bird in the hand. And that will continue to be our outlook going forward uh, until we see some kind of trend developing. Um, these are the, this is the ETF2 uh, regional report looking at these 10 signal regions. Um, only one, only technology is above its four month moving average. So everything else is on a cash signal one buy. That leaves us at 10% invested, 90% cash in the theoretical model. Um, right now the S&P at 71 is better than the globals at 66. So the US is favored over the globals. That's the second week uh, running for that. Um, US indexes, the strength is in technology at 75. Then the large caps at 71 then mid caps at 69 and the small caps at 68. The two strongest sectors are the U.S. technology at 71 and Japan at 75. And the two weakest sectors remain Latin America and emerging markets. Inside the U.S. large caps, looking at the sector spiders, we have uh, outstanding performance in the defensive plays of discretionary health care and utilities. Financials have been on a good run and then weakness here in materials and energy. That's been the case for a couple of months now. Um, looking at the global uh, world market model now inside the U.S., everything above average. Um, everything Asia is below average or exceptionally so with the exception of India and Vietnam. Uh, Brazil, Latin America, emerging markets getting crushed. Canada and Mexico weak. Everything Europe, slightly above average. And you notice that the healthcare care uh, is strong as a global phenomenon here and um, consumer discretionary, the U.S. has a clear lead compared to um, the global counterparts. Inside the other asset classes, commodities and oil suffering, gold and silver below average, but everything else starting to emerge again, treasuries, corporate bonds, U.S. real estate. I take that as a uh, flight to U.S. quality, uh, which we got our eye on. So we may want to add uh, treasuries and uh, U.S. real estate IYR to that list. Looking at the ETF top 30 through the ETF2 lens, we like to look for things that are in the green on strength and white on consistency because consistency is a 10-week moving average of strength. So when it's green and white, that means it's uh, recently moved into the green, and uh, but it's still been above average long term. So this is a sign of perhaps some momentum with still some room to go. If it's green across the board, then that means it's been there for a while. So the Internet Index, the regional banks, um, Japan hedged, NASDAQ biotech, spider biotech, all of those have been strong for uh, a long while. Um, but um, 
uh, ITB Home Construction and the Home Builders XHB. That's a second vote uh, on on Home Builders, uh, so that deserves our attention. And then all of these uh, here are uh, signaling recent emergence. Notice the strong representation of the XL series. This is a broad-based flight to U.S. large caps as a way to park money during this sideways chop while everything's getting sorted out uh, globally. And uh, with the concerns about China, that's money flowing uh, to the U.S. longer term. Uh, down here, yellow or, uh, white and yellow in the treasuries is a signal for uh, continued flight to quality, but in, in that asset class. So, uh, so treasuries is of interest uh, for that reason also. That's more flight to quality, I think. Looking through the same lens now at the Dow, uh, the uh, long-term strength leaders remain in the uh, financial sector. Goldman, Visa, J.P. Morgan are three of the top five. Um, uh, Nike, uh, Home Depot round that out. I still love Home Depot here as green and white. And then Pfizer, Travelers, and McDonald's uh, all are looking good. So uh, if we want to if we want to drill down to large caps that have been leading the way, um, that's where we want to look. So Home Depot, uh, Pfizer in the healthcare sector, and uh, Travelers in the financials, and then McDonald's in, I'm going to call that consumer discretionary. <coughs> Moving over to the daily report, we've got some 5DDs here in Latin America, oil and blended blended commodities. Um, I like those. And then a 551W down here in Coca-Cola. And then in the auto framer, we have a ton of goodies um, that all test out better than two to one just on the basis of trade location. No signals from channeling and overreaction. Um, I, I like the looks of Disney here. Um, it was a percent loser on Friday. Uh, you notice it was down minus 0.3. Uh, it's number one at our max pain range compression. It signals as a channeling, and it has an 11 to 1 auto framer reward to risk ratio. So that, that demands our intention. And then Apple, Procter & Gamble, and Goldman. So uh, I like those as max pain range compressions and PRCs. Um, for uh, uh, Apple, Procter and Gamble, and, uh, and Goldman Sachs, good reasons to love all of those. I mean, uh, you have Procter and Gamble in the healthcare sector, so that could be buying strength on a dip. Goldman could be buying strength on a dip in the hot financial sector, and then Apple um, buying quality on sale um, in the tech sector. Uh, DuPont had been horrible, but gave a, a nice performance on Friday. So um, we've been day trading that one with success on the way down. That might be signaling a turning point. Uh, we have a ton of dojis to look at here as well. And we have an overreaction short signal in, um, in AXP. So we'll take, we will frame that trade uh, on our weekend webinar as well. Looking at the ETFs now. Again, only a couple uh, dojis. We have an overreaction signal short in gold. Um, that means that it would have, it's been in a downward slide, but had a one day pop. Uh, in this case, a 2.5%. Um, we got two signals that are hitting on the RSI2, and that's Latin America and oil. And we're already well interested in Latin America with its 4.5 to 1 reward to risk ratio and a five day down as uh, and in U USO oil. Same thing, 3.1 and a five-day down, and then a 4.2 in um, Brazil. Brazil has the benefit of being a high frog number at 3.1. Um, so all those look to be of interest. Uh, these are the auto framer statistics for uh, where we put our mechanical trade frames for entries, initial stops, price targets, <coughs> reward to risk ratios, and such. Um, the regression line fractal framework, these are looking on the top shelf here in the green are the ones that are the most numbers of ATR below their 270 regression line, making them potential buy on val uh, value plays uh, if we see a, a reversion to the long-term fair value, which we take to be the RL270. So DuPont, for example, is 9.5 ATRs 
below its own 270 regression line. United Technologies at almost 11. Um, and then those on the bottom shelf in the red are the ones that are, these are the relative strength leaders, the ones that are the most numbers of ATR above their own RL270. So it's going to be relative strength leaders like American Express, Microsoft, Caterpillar, McDonald's, and Nike. Uh, and so uh, we will frame a, a number of those in our webinar as well. These are our daily squeezes, a relatively new idea for us. Uh, again, targets that have become compressed on a daily basis by which we measure the range. Uh, is less than 0.7 of the average range, and so that's this column, uh, range divided by average range. So all these are more than, or, or tighter compressed than 0.7 ATR. And then at the same time, they have a large potential intraday move, and we do that by computing the range stat, our proprietary uh, measure of intraday potential performance, a range statistic, divided by the risk we're willing to achieve, and it's greater than two, that means that locks in our two to one. A potential one-day pop. So, things like Amazon, United Health, um, Google, Devon Energy, and so forth, uh, all coming in better than two to one. So these are all candidates for large one-day moves on the basis of uh, uh, range compression. Um, that's everything I want to cover. Um, right, we have the other slides in the background for folks that do, are doing deeper research, but that's everything I want to cover here. We're about 20 minutes in. Uh, so we have uh, a number of different uh, trades to frame up, and that's what we'll be covering during our, our weekend webinar uh, for members, and uh, we invite you to join us uh, and participate. The chat room has been uh, doing some exceptional work, as usual, this week. Uh, some great trade framing, good quality collaborative learning, some great lessons learned um, that are raising all of our games. So. Uh, keep up the great work there, guys, and we'll see you uh, in the chat room. So this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital. Keep your wrist measured and your powder dry.